gosh, five months traveling around. We've seen some amazing things, but holy cow, does it feel good to be home. Absolutely. It's been a, I mean, we've been traveling the whole time. Uh, and we, yeah, like Stacy said, we have seen so many amazing places, but you know, it always feels good to get back home. <laughs> We're on our way to Amarillo. We're coming for you, Amarillo. Coming for Look you. Look out. And we're going to take you guys along, so stick around. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. I'm Stacy. I'm Tom, and we're RV Texas, y'all. We are native Texans and full-time RVers who are all about exploring the great state of Texas and beyond one campground at a time. We're on a mission to experience life, not just live it, and we're bringing you along for the fun. In 2018, we sold our house, our business, and got rid of most everything we owned to hit the road and see America. Our home is a 33-foot RV named Freedom. We installed an extreme solar and lithium setup so now we can just about live anywhere with our dog Star and our cat Astro. Every day is a new adventure, so join us as we RV America, y'all. Well guys, sometimes you gotta expect the unexpected and what you never want to happen really happened to us. Yes, we had a blowout on the sidewall of the tire. And most of y'all know that, I mean, our rig's only about a year and a half old. We only have 13,600 miles on these Michelin tires. So, yeah, we're gonna kind of take you through what happened how it happened and how we resolved it. So stick around. So this is not the video we expected to be bringing you. Uh, we had expected, like we said last week, to take you into Colorado and share our travels there. And we will be bringing you those videos, but we felt like this was an important video to jump ahead because this is something that a lot of our viewers fear, and it was our biggest fear, um, having a front drive tire blowout, especially in a Class A motorhome. Yeah, and this is why we bought the retro bands, and um, we're going to talk more about that later in the video, but we were just coming into Texas here. And right when we got into Texas and got into Amarillo, uh, we were exiting. We had exited the freeway or the highway. Yes. Um, to, so we were half mile from the RV park and we were actually making a right turn. So we weren't going that fast. Um, and we just heard a big boom. Oh, it was a big boom. Yeah, and it was. We couldn't figure out, though, the strangest thing was... We couldn't figure out what it was because we heard this loud boom, but the RV did not change at all the way it was riding. Not, it, there was no shimmy, there was no shake, there was no shift. It was just, it felt totally normal. So I thought maybe something had shifted in the under, under bay basement. Yeah, and I thought something fell towards the back of the RV in at like out of a cupboard or something. So. I mean, no difference in control of the coach, so I thought, I didn't think it was a tire. So, you know, we went to the uh, the next half mile to get to the RV park, and we, once we got there, you know, Stacy gets out to check us in and, you know, and tell I, them what happened. Well, so as I get out, I just kind of take a look over, and holy cow, there was a hole the size of my fist in the sidewall of this tire and i never expected to see that absolutely not because the tire didn't even go flat no, and it, it didn't set off any of the alarms on any of our tire pressure monitoring um it like i said it didn't feel any different it was it was crazy i never expected there to be a hole in the side of the tire so when we checked in i asked the folks at the front desk for a recommendation on a tire shop luckily 
Uh, Lone Star Tire and Lube is literally five minutes down the road. These guys are awesome. Yes, they are. We'd, we'd strongly recommend them. I mean, how lucky we got that they were right there, and it happened right at the RV park. So we didn't have to move. Once we got in our spot, we didn't have to move again. We used our jacks to jack up the coach so he could take off the tires. So he didn't have to put any hydraulic jacks or anything underneath our RV. Now, this happened on a Friday afternoon, yep. right before 5 o'clock, of course. <laughs> yep. Isn't that always the way it goes? But they were able to, tire. Uh, Tom called them, they were able to, locate a tire these tires are not always easy to find yeah um and they uh they were able to get it to us on monday yeah they got the tire in on monday so then they called us and came out you see he, he got it taken off they had fantastic equipment and uh very nice people and they're going you know he's going to take it to the shop that's literally five minutes away from the rv park and since we were going there, we, we needed to get the truck inspected, too, and they do that. So we got that knocked out at the same time. We did. And so uh, the gentleman in the blue shirt here that you see his back, that's Doug Fowler, and this is his shop. Again, Lone Star Tire and Lube. Um, and he just jumped in and, and helped his guys, and what an amazing experience we had. Oh, yeah, and they were really intrigued about this whole thing because, believe me, they were shocked that that tire didn't lose all its air and everything, too. And so since we had the retroband on there, they had to know how to take it off. So I called uh, National Indoor RV Centers in Dallas because I had to do two things. One, I had to set an appointment to go get the retroband put back on because the shop's not going to be able to put the... Uh, retroband back on and and so we did that and then i let them talk to them so they told them how to take it off and and it it kind of is a two-person job there's a couple of bolts in there that need to be loosening you loosen you see them loosening them up and there's one on the top and the bottom and once they get it totally loosened up then they got to stretch the tire enough to get the retroband out of there and the retro band, in case you've not heard of these, this is basically an insert within the tire right? Uh, that is designed to keep a tire from coming apart, basically, in the event of a blowout. Yeah. It, and it worked. It worked. And they even believed that it, it the reason why it didn't lose the air because it had this big retro band in there that could hold the stability of the tire. Mm -hmm. um, because... If that hadn't have been in there, I don't think there's any way that little bitty thin strip of rubber that was left could have stayed intact. I think it would have blown out right away with the weight of the front of the RV, but it didn't. So that was a good thing for us. And Well, we've all seen the videos, right, yeah. of especially Class A RVs having a blowout as they're driving down the road and losing control, going off the road, maybe even flipping over and or just having a lot of damage to the body of the RV. We had none of that. We had none of that. And in fact, now, we were, were lucky because we were off of the highway. And we weren't going real fast at the time. Right. But I will say, we're going to link a video down below because they did a video. National Indoor. National Indoor RV Centers did a video showing a blowout situation with these retro bands. And it's fascinating. But all I can say is, well, wow, we were really lucky and no damage. We had no damage I mean, you can to the see coach. right here everything is absolutely perfect and these guys at lone star were so great to work with came back out got the tire back on now we didn't have to have the uh the retro band reinstalled right away even though we obviously have the one on the other side but we wanted to make it a priority to get to nirvc and get it reinstalled so that we'd be protected yeah absolutely So, yeah, these guys uh, at Lone Star were a joy to work with. Absolutely. I am so happy that we, uh, when this happened, because I guess if you drive long enough, you're going to have some issue, right? Um, in all of our years of RVing, we had never had a tire failure or a tire problem at all. So if it's going to happen, 
I'm glad that it happened somewhere where there was a great shop to take care of us. That's for sure. We got really lucky. And we're going to talk more about some of the things we learned along this process um, here later in this video. Um, but yeah, so from here, we knew we wanted to get to Dallas to NIRBC to get it reinstalled. But our next stop was actually Caprock Canyons, which is one of our favorite state parks. And we didn't want to miss that. So we didn't go straight to NIRBC. Uh, we went to Caprock first. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll bring you that video later as well because we filmed a new video there. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's jump ahead in this video and take you to Louisville to our friends at National Indoor RV Centers. Okay, well, we just got disconnected. We're here at NIRVC Dallas, uh, Louisville, um, and we ha had an appointment set for tomorrow morning. We're staying here overnight in the coach. Uh, gonna have a valet come pick us up and put us in a spot back there so we can get our retro band put back on our tire in the morning. So, yeah, we had a good trip today. Here's the babies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Come on, guys. St Stacy's going to take them. And. I'm going to go set up with the ballet. Okay, so first of all, we didn't show the install or the reinstall of the retro band in this video because we have a video where we showed the install yeah. of the retro bands last year. So we'll link that in the description in case you haven't seen it. And it's a pretty cool process, so you want to watch that video. It yeah. was pretty neat, but we didn't feel like you wanted to see it necessarily again, again. if you've already seen it. Yeah. Um, so, some of the things that we've learned during this process, first of all, when we heard the boom, even though we didn't feel any differences, we really should have, well, so we were a half mile from our destination and going slow at this point, so not a big deal, but had this happened on the highway, then we really should have found a safe place to pull over For just sure. to look even though it seemed like everything was fine. Yeah, so I think if you really hear something that, you know, is out, way out of the normal, you know, if you, as soon as you get to a safe place to pull off, I think you should. I mean... You and, never know, you might have a hole the size of my fist in the sidewall of your that, tire. <laughs> that's right, and we will next time, you know, if we're out on the highway, we will, as soon as we find a safe place, we're going to pull over and check everything. Um... For, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because you just, you never know. You never know. You can think you know what it is, but if it's unusual, you probably don't know what it is. We also learned that with these retro bands, that for the life of us owning the coach, I mean, they didn't charge us anything to reinstall it. And also, had it been damaged whatsoever, they would have replaced it at no additional cost. So, getting it reinstalled was not... Not an issue. In fact, also on the 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 tire shop taking them off, mm -hmm. they didn't need any special tools. Oh yeah. At all. The I mean a regular wrench and, and stuff, that's all they needed. And that's big because you never know where you're gonna be when something like this is gonna happen. On our Tiffin Breeze, we had a similar product uh, right. on our front drive tires. But it required a special toolbox with very specific tools that were not common. So I love that we don't have to carry around extra parts, pieces, tools for the retro bands. Yeah, so that's nice for sure. Yeah, so, you know, it, this is something that you hope you never need, for, like I said. <laughs> yeah. But I got to tell you, having had the experience, we... We loved having them before because it gives us peace of mind. But having had this experience, I feel like we can now speak from experience that... Yeah. We I, know they work. Oh, I won't own a coach again without retro bands. That's for sure. Not I mean, that we're getting rid of this one because we're not. We're not. <laughs> 
We love our new air. Uh, and we love our retro bands. I mean, we... Uh, thank goodness this became almost a non-event. It really did. They, they, they did exactly what they were supposed to do and then some. And, uh, you know... We're happy. We're obviously happy for that. And, you know, so we'd strongly recommend this. We are not affiliated no. with Retroband at all. It's not like if you order them, we're going to make money off it. No. No, that's not, not what this all. is about. We paid for our Retrobands and because we felt like we wanted to be safe. Right. And it, it paid off. And hopefully never happens again. That's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. If you have any other questions about how this worked for us, if there's something we've forgotten to mention, or you, it, drop us a comment, let us know. We'll do our best to answer. Uh, like I said, we'll put a link to uh, the retro band video uh, or our install video of retro bands. Yeah. We'll also put a link to um, the video that Tom mentioned where our friend Brett um, was driving a brand new Cornerstone 45-foot yes. motor coach, and they purposefully blew a front drive tire to test the retro bands and see no how they would perform. We'll put that link in the description. Uh, we'll also put a link to uh, Lone Star uh, Tire and Lube. Uh, those guys, again, are awesome. And uh, our friends at NIRVC and all of that. So yeah. if you have any questions on links of things we've talked about, as always, they'll be in the description. Well, here at National Indoor, they got our uh, retro bands done, uh, retro band put back in. And while we were here, we decided to get her all washed up, and that worked out real good. Take a look. So we're ready to hit the road.